it's Tuesday night and out of my boredom I've done something rather silly. I've taken out the beloved RX 5700 XT and put in something far less powerful. The GTX 650. Oh yes! All that power. That 2012 power. Now, since it's a piece of shit, I thought, how much more performance can we get out of it? Because really, any performance improvement is appreciated. So, if that sounds good to you, why not get yourself a cup of tea or a beer if that's more your thing? And come along for this dreadful ride. This is the GTX 650. Released in 2012, it's based on the 28 nanometer Kepler architecture. Inside, it's humble with 384 CUDA cores, 32 TMUs, and 16 ROUs. There's 1 gig of VRAM, and in terms of API support, it's DirectX 12 and Vulkan 1.2. The core clock is 1058 MHz, and the memory comes at 2499 MHz. That core clock sounds humble, but don't worry, it's going up soon if you catch my drift. Inside it's a humble card in terms of power draw, asking for only 65 watts. It gets this power from one 6-pin connector, though there are versions out there like the ASUS one that don't require that connector at all. They'll just work off PCIe. In terms of relative performance, it's up there with a 4060 and a 1030, though it is slightly quicker than a 5770. So it's got an odd power curve. So that's the 650. So without further ado, let's turn this GDX 650 into a 650 OC. First overclock of the GTX 650. And no memory clock. No memory clock change, just core to 100. Uni engine is not our benchmark. We want to just use that to just check stability. So, 100, we want to give that a couple minutes just to run on 100. Temperatures at 55. Temperatures at 55. So we're going up to 150 megahertz. Uh, GPU temperature. Now at about 57 here, 58. It's climbing. I'm running at uh, 1,200 megahertz. The fan speed is at 24. Yeah. Oh, f is that pizza still in there? No. Whoops. Holy sh! Is it burnt? No. Okay, good. Well cooked. Oh, it's very well cooked, but it's not bad. Okay, that's good. That's all we need. Yes, Tim is over here, just having a frozen pizza. Yes, because. Five in the morning, we are overclocking a card that is 11 years old. We are going to bump it up to 200 megahertz now. So we are now at uh, 1254 megahertz, and I've upped the fan speed to 70%, which is the max. Uh, and we are sitting at a stable 52 53 degree. This little cooler manages to cool this pretty well. This little EVGA 650. I'm going to bump it to 210 now. 
and let it apply. We've now bumped it to 210 megahertz plus, so we're up to 1267 megahertz. 210 stable. Oh, it's not, I have not having no like um, artifacting yet. Mm. 53 degrees too. Yeah, I upped the fan as you can hear. Oh. What happens if I go too high? If the graphics driver crashes, you get some artifacts. Yeah. And, um, To 243 megahertz, 1293 megahertz at the moment, and we're seeing no like artifacts at all. Mm -hmm. So let's go down in here mm -hmm. and add up to 250. Then oh. we're running at uh, 1.306 gigahertz at the moment. 1.3 gigahertz <laughs> on the GTX 650, bro. I wonder how far we can push it. I mean, it's running way fast enough. Mm -hmm. It's not running at 13, it's running at 20 now. Yeah. I'm actually keen to see what our final overclock is. <laughs> We're only at 54 degrees. Yeah, but it's not about temperature. Yeah, the cold about... wine. Hey. So let's summarize that overclocking run. Here are the six overclocks that we did. I want to take a closer look, however, at these top three here. Now, although William did say that 1306 was stable, um, with further testing, we did find artifacts there. So um, we did have to lower it down and rule that out. Now 1293 once again, um, that looked stable in initial testing, um, but further testing revealed that uh, we did have visual artifacts there as well. Um, going back down to 1267, uh, we did find that that was stable, uh, but I wanted to go a little bit higher because 210 and 243 is obviously a massive jump. Uh, but we did actually find that 1280, so just shy of 1293, um, was really quite stable. So our final overclock ended up being 1280 megahertz, uh, an extra 230 megahertz over the base clock. The memory clock wasn't really raised because uh, we did have stability issues with really any overclock at all on the memory, even a couple megahertz, uh, and it wouldn't affect performance massively anyway. Uh, the next thing is the core voltage. You can't actually adjust it through afterburner on this card. There's probably a way, but uh, we didn't have time to find out. Uh, so we just went with the um, base core voltage. Without further ado, let's jump into the green marks and compare how much that overclock has uh, benefited performance. Uh, if you're interested in the specs of the test PC we're using, they're right there below. Let's dive in.
During a recent night out with some friends, the evening reached that point where most folks have gone to bed and the deep conversations could begin with the true night owls that remain. One of the gentlemen there was reflecting on his studies into biology and said something I found quite profound. He said, the more you study, the more you realize you don't know. It's another spin on a similar quote from Aristotle, but of course, with me being an old computer fiend, what he said did not in fact remind me of Aristotle's words on the depth of knowledge, but instead reminded me of the humble GTX 650. I couldn't help but relate what this gentleman shared to my experiences with these older graphics cards. The more I delve into tinkering with these old relics, the more I have to acknowledge how limited my knowledge really is about their capabilities. It's a humbling realization to discover how misguided my assumptions about them were in the first place. I've always admired the GTX 650. An old friend had one in his Optiplex 745 and swore by its performance. However, after spending two weeks tinkering with it, I've gained a newfound respect for this card. But more than that, it has sparked a fresh curiosity around what some of these old cards can do. Here I am sitting in my room and I look back at these two gorgeous radions and wonder too what they can do. Just a bit of experimentation with this old Sphix 50 has reignited my curiosity for these old beasts. With just a touch of overclocking, the way the card sprung to life and went from a choppy 30 frames to pushing 45 and over in games like Overwatch left me impressed. 10 frames per second doesn't sound like much, but when we're dealing with such low frame rates, an extra 10 to 15 frames can be the difference between playable and actually enjoyable. The whole experience also reminded me of the magic of the PC world. Even a 10-year-old low-end card can still hold its own in a number of titles. This card is dirt cheap on the used market and would complement a lower end PC build for LAN parties or the living room. However, if your ambition is to play newer games, despite it having a decent performance, its older drivers that it's limited to hold it back. Or to put it in other words, the GPU is willing, but the drivers are weak. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on the GTX 650. Did you ever have one? Or maybe you have had some experience with its younger brother, the GTX 750, a card that much more than the 650 has that legendary status to us lower end fans. Either way, I hope you enjoyed tonight's video. Thanks again for watching and good night. Stang inte av datorn! What is it actually? Förbereder Windows. Stäng inte av datorn. 650 is a monster for... How much do they go for? Nothing now. The GDX 650, bro. I seriously underestimated this little... Yeah, me <laughs> thought I was going to get like half that. Yeah, this is a good little card. I'm always so appreciative of each and every person who watches these videos but I want to take a moment to thank a specific group. I want to say the most sincere thank you to those of you who have subscribed on Patreon, because your donations are really helping to keep this channel going. Right now, while I'm between jobs and trying to figure out my next career move, these videos have become a bit of a full-time job. 
Your donations are, right now, literally helping put food on my table and keep a roof over my head. So I truly appreciate each and every one. Just to be crystal clear, I'm not going to use your donations to get a Lamborghini or hit the club. Every penny is going straight into covering my living expenses and in turn straight back in to these videos. So thanks a bunch. That's not that bad. It's way quieter than someone's PC. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> I'm very sensitive about how loud my Dell is. The f***ing Dell Optiplex. When you're playing a flight simulator, it's a 4D experience. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, it, it's not a bug, it's a feature. It's a feature. Uh, yes. When you're playing the flight simulator, you actually have the jet turbine experience.